Most of us know what it feels like to be distressed by the sound of a crying baby. Whether we're on the plane, at the park, or in a restaurant, a, jolt, a screeching wail from a child can be a jolt to the system. A more passive cry from, say, a hungry baby may be merely annoying. But what may not occur to us as we irritably buckle up for takeoff is that um, evolution has shaped us to respond this way, both adults and babies. So for new caregivers, the stress caused by a cry is a very powerful motivator to immediately care for the child. The power of a cry is its ability to capture our attention. And as we well know, a cry is something that's not very easy to ignore. Now when I say evolution has shaped us to respond this way, does that us include other animals besides ourselves? Um, so let us imagine that we have a deer mother and a human mother and that both moms separately hear their own baby cry. If somehow we could get both moms in an fMRI at this exact moment to measure their cerebral blood flow, would we see the same brain regions light up? Are the same neurotransmitters and hormones involved in their responses? These questions get at the fundamental nature of our evolutionary relationship with other animals. Now, my study didn't use fMRI, but instead had human participants complete surveys and provide saliva samples after listening to different types of cries. My study on humans and my supervisor, Dr. Susan Lingle's study on deer mothers, found that both humans and deer respond to the cries of other species as they would respond to a cry from their own species. So for example, deer mothers ran hundreds of meters at times to approach a speaker that was playing a human baby cry. Human participants in my study indicated that they felt a desire to help and perceived neediness in the cries of animals of other species, including deer. So as always, there is the question of why this study matters and what its practical importance is. Some researchers, such as Jacques Panksepp, believe that this initial infant caregiver relationship where a baby learns that she can cry and reliably get attention and affection from crying, forms the basis of her future ability to trust others, form positive relationships, and even be a caregiver herself. In addition, cries can be used as a diagnostic tool for certain medical conditions, and abnormal cries may even be able to predict abusive caregiver behavior. So if we want to better understand social behavior more generally, we should start with the earliest kind of communication we have, which is crying. Thank you.